lesson on on die power integrity in this lesson we are going to delve into the details of how to perform on die power integrity the key points we will cover include an introduction to on die power integrity and the specifications used in designing an on die power grid resistive checks that help identify power distribution network quality and robustness static and dynamic analysis of on die power integrity which assesses the stability and reveals the real time behavior of power systems providing insights into how power flows through the pdn grid lastly we will introduce some essential mitigation techniques to address both static and dynamic pdn issues ensuring the reliable operation of electronic systems let's commence our exploration of the world of on die power integrity in the previous module we discussed various components of a system including the die package and pcb now we will narrow our focus to the power integrity of the die alone the die is a fundamental element of integrated circuits it comprises active transistors that require power to operate thus power distribution systems are integrated to supply power to the transistor terminals this is known as on die pdn ensuring sufficient power delivery to all transistors while minimizing metal usage is a challenging task due to high transistor density on die power integrity ensures that the power supply is both reliable and robust a critical factor for the seamless functioning of electronic devices Next let's review some on die pdn specifications used in performing on die power integrity checks on die pdn specifications when performing power integrity checks on the on die pdn network several specifications need to be adhered to here are a few of them one domain voltage level this refers to the voltage levels to which each independent power net is connected for instance some may operate at 0.9 volt while others at 0.8 volt two pvt corner PVT stands for process voltage temperature which is used for characterizing IC operating conditions. Process refers to variations in the manufacturing process like transistor sizes, manufacturing tolerance and so on. Voltage refers to the operating voltage of the chip. Temperature refers to the chip's operating temperature. For instance, a low temperature low voltage and worst case process corner represents a scenario where a chip needs to operate in a very cold environment with a low power supply and lowest transistor performance number 3 voltage or ir drop this refers to a drop in the voltage levels relative to the ideal domain voltage at transistor power pins for example if instance a is connected to vdd a which has an ideal voltage of 0.9 volt and the measured voltage at its power pin is 0.85 volt the drop would be 0.05 volt the goal is to minimize this drop for all the instances number 4 ir violations this refers to instances that have not met ir drop thresholds this is crucial to ensure the reliable performance of the chip typical thresholds are 5 to 10% of the ideal voltage which is design dependent understanding pdn network importance let's explore the fascinating world of pdn networks by making a comparison to a real life analogy of water supply networks imagine a complex metal mesh network that resembles the pipelines of a water supply system now visualize individual houses as small self sufficient entities and reservoir tanks as decoupling capacitors that act as charge reservoirs just like pipeline blockages high resistance in pdn networks can cause similar impedance similarly pipeline leakage can be compared to voltage drops if you have ever experienced a sur sudden surge in water pressure in pipelines you can easily understand how it can be seen as switching noise in pdn networks fascinating isn't it pdn analysis grid robustness analysis as we have previously discussed the pdn grid is constructed using a complex metal mesh network structure This network incorporates the use of different metal layers stacked to provide power to each instance. These interconnects offer resistance which can lead to a voltage drop at the instance pin. To assess the quality of the grid connection, we calculate the resistances of the path from bump to the instance pin. Bump here refers to the hookup point where package connections are made to die. A lower resistance indicates a better grid connection. There are two types of grid resistance checks. One, shortest resistance path. This refers to the value of the single shortest resistance path to a bump. 
The shortest resistance path is vital in the development and analysis of on-die power grids as it minimizes electrical resistances, thus decreasing power loss in the high current path. Effective resistance. The effective resistance check is crucial as it considers the combined resistance in multiple parallel paths. To calculate the effective resistance, we follow the same steps as we do while deriving effective thermion resistance. This helps optimize the grid architecture and minimize voltage drops. Other types of grid robustness checks involved are short checks, disconnect checks, and missing wire checks, etc. On die power integrity static analysis. Now let's understand static on die PDN checks. Static IR analysis is a crucial approach for checking power integrity for on die PDN networks. Static voltage checks examine the steady state voltage drops throughout a chip's power delivery network under various operating conditions. Steady state voltage refers to a constant voltage level that remains stable over time. Different operating conditions could include various modes such as sleep, standby, high performance mode, etc. This analysis ensures safe voltage levels in PDN to prevent performance issues and chip failures. Key components of static PDN checks. Let's delve into the key components of static PDN checks. Voltage drop analysis. A voltage drop occurs when the current flows through the resistance, leading to a drop in the voltage across the power distribution network. IR drop analysis measures the voltage differences between the power supply and the instance pins to identify potential issues. By assessing and minimizing the IR drop, the chip's performance and reliability can be enhanced. Electromigration checks. Electromigration can cause structural damage such as voids or hillocks, which affect the reliability and longevity of the chips. By ensuring proper current density management, the risk of electromigration induced failures can be minimized. Static voltage drop on PDN network. Let's examine how static voltage analysis is modeled. Each instance is replaced with a constant average DC current source as shown in the circuit here. The average current is calculated as I average equal to average power divided by V supply. P average comprises internal leakage and switching power components as we discussed in earlier modules. The PDN grid is represented as a mesh of resistors connected from the bump to the instance power or ground pins. Please note that the reactive components of the PDN grid such as capacitance and inductance are not modeled in static analysis. The static analysis only captures the voltage drop due to the resistive grid component. An ideal DC voltage is attached to the power and ground pads and the circuit is analyzed to compute static voltage values at each node in the circuit. Based on the voltage drop results at each instance pin, any regions in the design with voltage violations are identified and remedied by design changes. on die power integrity dynamic checks. Let's examine how dynamic checks are performed. Dynamic voltage analysis is a technique for analyzing voltage variations or transients in a chip's power delivery network during dynamic operational settings. It involves evaluating the PDN's responsiveness to time-varying instance switching conditions. This analysis aids in the prevention of voltage droops, noise, and other transient-induced difficulties by ensuring steady and dependable power distribution. Key components of dynamic PDN checks. Let's examine the key components of dynamic PDN checks. Voltage noise analysis. Dynamic PDN checks model the PDN grid as reactive elements, capacitance, inductance, and resistance. Voltage noise is caused by the inductance and capacitive effects within the PDN as well as the rapid changes in the on die current. By quantifying and minimizing voltage noise, the stability and performance of the chip can be improved. Simultaneous switching noise analysis. Assessment occurs when multiple instances switch simultaneously, causing a sudden surge in chip current. Assessment analysis evaluates the magnitude and timing of the simultaneous switching events to identify potential issues. By understanding and managing assessment strategies such as power grid optimization and decoupling capacitor placement can be employed to mitigate the impact. Victim and aggressor representation of dynamic analysis. 
to understand dynamic analysis it's crucial to comprehend the concept of victim and aggressor instances on a chip a victim instance is an instance which is sensitive to impact due to a neighboring instance switching an aggressor instance is an instance that has the potential to impact the voltage drop for the victim instance in a dynamic scenario there could be multiple aggressors around a victim instance due to various aggressor switching there could be significant background switching noise which greatly impacts the observed instance drop this is referred to as simultaneous switching noise dynamic voltage drop on pdn let's take a look at how dynamic voltage drop analysis is modeled each instance is now modeled as a time varying current source as shown in the circuit diagram this time varying current source is characterized by detailed spice simulations for each cell to be used in the voltage drop analysis in reality the power distribution grid is more complex than just a mesh of resistors the interconnects are placed very close to each other and behave like capacitors that store charge the interconnects also carry time varying currents that cause magnetic flux and self inductance therefore now the pdn grid as model as a mesh of resistance capacitance and inductance to capture the transient effects of time varying current we would solve the circuit which would be time varying transient analysis to capture the transient voltage waveform at each node the transient waveform is analyzed to identify power supply noise which could be due to high inductance and analyze grid responsiveness to sudden changes in current static and dynamic checks in comparison to water distribution network now that we have learned about static and dynamic analysis let's return to our water supply example to better understand how these checks are useful static static checks can be likened to the analysis of the system under normal operating conditions similar to how static checks analyze the power distribution network under steady state conditions in vlsi circuit static checks are required for identifying leakage static checks help identify any leakage points in the water distribution system ensuring that water flows smoothly without significant loss stability check static checks help identify any issues with the structural stability of the water distribution system to ensure that the system can carry required capacity dynamic checks dynamic checks can be likened to the analysis of the system's behavior during varying conditions or events similar to dynamic checks in power integrity dynamic checks are required for ensuring adequate pressure dynamic help checks help ensure that the water distribution system can handle sudden changes in current while maintaining adequate pressure by monitoring pressure levels during dynamic events the system can be optimized to handle such scenarios preventing water hammer dynamic checks help identify potential water hammer issues arrowing measures to be taken to mitigate the impact such as installing pressure relief valves or surge suppressors static and dynamic pdn issues after performing static and dynamic voltage drop analysis we can visualize instance drops as heat map here we show a typical heat map of how voltage drops are analyzed here the red region indicates high voltage drop and the blue region indicates low voltage drop from the hot spots with regions of higher drops how do we go about fixing those regions an instance can have a higher drop due to various reasons high self power which may be due to high events or high self power weak pdn grid construction high simultaneous switching the first step towards fixing them is to identify what's the root cause mitigation techniques for static and dynamic pdn issues let's take a closer look at some common techniques used to solve static and dynamic pdn issues as we have previously discussed the first step in fixing static or dynamic ir violations is to identify the root cause this can be done by analyzing various heat maps such as instance power heat map and grid resistance heat map be it spr or r effect once the root cause has been identified we can use the following mitigation techniques mitigation technique for high power consumption clock gating or power gating clock gating selectively disables clocks to reduce switching activities and associated power noise 
power gating allows shutting off power to ideal or unused circuit blocks minimizing power consumption and associated noise the above techniques help reduce switching power consumption or leakage or ideal power consumption thus improving the ir drop mitigation technique for weak pdn grid construction power or ground optimization strategies such as minimizing loop area reducing grid impedance and optimizing power and ground grid placement can be implemented to improve grid construction mitigation techniques for simultaneous switching placement rearrangement instances that consume very high power can be isolated or rearranged in such a way that they have less effect on their neighboring instances mitigation techniques for high inductive drops or high switching frequencies decoupling capacitors the placement of decoupling capacitors near power hungry components help minimize power noise what if we have not met the pdn specifications when the power delivery network specifications are not met it can result in a change in chip performance power and functioning following are several post silicon fixes which need to be performed as pdn specs were not met it would result in degradation of chip performance which is done by reducing chip operating frequency to a lower clock frequency which ultimately slows down its operations to mitigate such a uh, power delivery issues software or firmware updates need to be deployed these updates may include changes to the way components are powered on or off additionally on day voltage regulators can be adjusted to compensate for voltage drops this involves tuning the voltage regulator settings to ensure stable voltage levels during different operating conditions ansys red hat ac digital power integrity sign off ANSYS is a leading provider of digital power integrity sign-off tools in the industry. ANSYS Red Hat SE in particular is the most trusted and widely used voltage drop and electro migration multi-physics sign-off solution for digital designs. With its advanced analytics, Red Hat SE can quickly identify any weaknesses in the design and enable what-if explorations to optimize power and performance. This results in robust low-power digital designs. that perform optimally well without any loss of performance additionally red hat sc provides designers with comprehensive techniques to detect and correct dynamic voltage drops ensuring that the designs are both efficient and effective to learn more about ansys solutions please visit our website so we have now come to the end of this lesson let's summarize what we have learned In the beginning we defined on day power integrity and discussed a few pdn specifications that are necessary for performing power integrity analysis we explored different resistive checks including shortest power checks and effective resistance checks and their significance in identifying pdn grid quality we examined the details of performing static and dynamic checks and why they are essential for ensuring pdn grid reliability and performance We also looked at various methods to fix static and dynamic IR violations such as power gating, clock gating, adding caps and placement rearrangement. In the end, we discussed what happens when PDN specifications are not met and how we can solve that post silicon. Having covered on day PDN power integrity concepts, the next module will focus on performing various electro migration and electrostatic discharge reliability checks on the PDN network. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.